Hey guys, what's going on? So my name is Guy here, and this is my brand new airsoft gun that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. More so, I think, when I saw the review of Red Wolf Airsoft, and I thought to myself, I, I just have to have this gun. I just have to have this gun. I'm a massive fan of World War II weaponry, um, Russian, American, even the German weaponry, but this gun itself would be by far one of my ultimate favorite guns. And when I first found out, how the power source of this gun is, I had to have it. This is the Humorex Legacy CO2 MP40. I'm gonna unbox it for you, get it set up, and we're gonna do a bit of shooting. I'm not gonna do any edits, any jump cuts, it's gonna be one big long continuation because quite frankly, I just don't wanna be bothered doing editing. I just wanna be as blunt as I possibly can about this gun. So here we go. Oh, that's World War II-ish weaponry style box. So you get the manual here, but we all pretty much know how it works. You get the really hefty steel 40 round mag. Um, a lot of people, I'm pretty sure, have kind of hated on this mag because Umrex went back to a really old school basis of this mag. It has a stopper or a blocker on the front to prevent the babies falling out. Uh, it looks like one of those old ASG, um, I think CZ Shadow mags, I don't know, but it's a mag, it works. The biggest gripe with this gun, and I have to kind of be a bit uh, about it as well too, is that it's uh, flat hopped. There is no hop up adjustability on it whatsoever, so the hop up will vary on what type of weight BBs you use. But if you have had had a lot of Tokyo Marui gas powered shotguns, You'll feel about it at home. So adjust it to the weight of your BB 0 0.20, 0 0.23, if they even still exist. 2.5s, 2.8s, and even 3.0s. So, being that this is purchased in Ireland, we are within the one jewel limit. I think this is shooting somewhere around 320, 326. I'm not too sure. Get out. Put this down for one second. Yeah, that's just the gun. You, you don't really need that. We have an Allen key to get the CO2 in the base plate of the mag, but I've already got preparation. And that's pretty much it. I really like the box, the old um, wooden crate lookalike. And the back, there's some specifications. And yeah, box. Who cares? We only care about the main gun itself. And my God, it is a beaut. The overall finish, Full aluminium, plastic handguard receiver. There are a few steel components in it as well too. I've yet to know which ones they are. I think the actual body pins holding it are steel. One of the little kind of uh, secret things this gun also has is that you can remove, again, why you'd want to do this, but it's there if you want. You can remove the original thread cover to reveal a 14 millimeter CCW thread. Which, if you know anything about airsoft, you will know that that is the standard airsoft configuration to put flash hiders, amplifiers, whatever you want. But on a World War II 1944 weapon, to put a silencer on it, to me that looks a bit goofy. So this will remain just as is. You've got the collapsible iconic stock. So it's a pretty comfortable gun to shoulder, I will be honest with you. Let's see what it looks like with the mag, complete the picture. Functional bolt. Oh, oh, I like the sound of that. And um, the real steel MP40. Let me just collapse this bipod. Bipod. Folding grip. Sorry. Get now my name's mixed up here today. The real functional um, MP40 itself. The functional safety would be where the bolts would lock back on the receiver end here and getting that little lip and that would pretty much be your safety because the real still only shot in full auto. Uh, however, this is not a real steel, this is an airsoft. So due to airsoft laws throughout the world and because Umarex wanted to market this throughout the world, they've incorporated a semi full auto and safe selector switch on the bottom, underneath, out of sight to make this gun look as real steel as possible because the real steel did not have this. So it's on safe. Very stiff, Jesus Christ. Middle is semi, and then, you guessed it, all the way down, full auto. When I shoot this, I'm gonna shoot it in semi first, and then full auto, so, put it back into semi, 
actually keep it safe because safety first. And we will remove the mag and talk about that and fill it up. Okay. So here's the mag itself. It takes 40 rounds. The bottom you remove with a Allen screw, Allen key, which I have here. I'm gonna remove this right now. I'm gonna put a bean bag underneath me because I have a great habit of letting things fall. I do not want this thing to fall because this thing weighs a freaking ton. Okay. So you would push in one CO2 facing down to be pierced and one CO2 inward, but with the nozzle facing up and the screw plate at the bottom would pierce the bottom and then the top would pierce the top. So I have two CO2s here in my pocket. Head first, head last. And then we screw this back in. Like so. And it has been noted as well too that you do have to really put a lot of force on these to pierce. There's the first one. And the second one. Okay, good enough. Got some BBs. For this test I'm gonna use 0.25s. One gripe about the mag is that it doesn't have a follower catch. You have to physically hold it down and there's a small little indent to where you will put them in and the BBs will trail down. It's a double stack. Like so. Again, OCD that I have. I'm sure a lot of airsofters are like to align the BBs and not have any gaps. Apparently there's some myth that it causes misfeeding when you have gaps, but I think it's just more of an OCD thing really, to be honest with you. There we go. And that's about it. We are fully loaded and ready to go. And you can see the, let me see if I'm focusing this now, because unfortunately my camera's broken, so I'm using my iPhone for this. You can see the small little blocker right there. A lot of people, when they first saw this, thought that this was the hop. I mean, there was no hop up on the gun, so they figured, oh, they must have put a hop rubber in the mag, which would be, a, a, I have to be honest, a pretty smart place to put a hop up. And that means you can independently adjust each mag. But the overall grand scheme of it is that the gun itself, and now I'm out of focus, the overall gun just does not have any hop at all. So what can you do? And I'm really out of focus. Holy crap. Just my brightness there, but there you go. So good to go. I'm going to put it in the gun. But first, let me put on my protection here. Better safe than sorry. As you know, I had some glasses, but I can't seem to find them. So these goggles will have to do, unfortunately. These are my old goggles, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna take the gun off safe into semi. Ooh, the bolt locks back as you can see. And then when you pull the trigger, very satisfying click. And let me just say as well too, the worn look that Umarex decided to put on this gun is absolutely fantastic. Really is nice. Big fan of that. Big, big fan of the the worn battle patina look. So, let's put the mag in. And we're good to go. So, first things first, I'm just gonna do a test fire out the window to make sure we're all good to go. We are indeed. That was on semi, and the kick is, wow. But that's just semi. The kick is nice, don't get me wrong. But what I'm looking forward to is the full auto. But first, a quick chrono meeting. Reading. Meeting? Reading. So, I've got my chronograph calibrated to read 0.25s. These are 0.25s in the gun itself. Probably the worst place to hold a chrono, but now and never. Ah. Don't do that to me, gun. Don't do that to me. It's very heavy. <laughs> this is very heavy. You know what? Let me just uh, be cheap and lazy and I'll just shoot it into the beanbag. Okay. Point nine eight. That's very, very close. Okay, try again. Be a man, hold it up. Okay. 
Okay, very high deviation. 1.51. That's not safe for Ireland. Come on, go. Probably because it's too fresh CO2 mag, so I'm willing to bet as the CO2 degrades slowly, the corona will come down. I bloody hope, because... I don't know about you, but the back of the mag says... One jewel. We're only allowed to have one jewel here in Ireland. Don't want a gun. That kick is amazing. Alright, go again. Two fives. There you go. Coming down. Point nine eight. Point nine five. She's coming down. Alright, let's get to the main thing. Full auto. And I have a full amount of BBs left in speed order. Let's just see how many BBs we can get through on one mag. Wow. Let me do that again. Oh crap. That is some kick. Wow. Okay. Go for two mags. Let's put the stock down and see what it's like. Not gonna be as fun, but still. Nine! One more. Just for fun. Just for fun. So happy. That's mag because I've got like that much BB test. And I'm gonna pull the stock back because I personally love the MP40, don't get me wrong. But this is not, I, I personally believe this is not a gun that you're not meant to be accurate with. This is just a fire from the hip. I mean, I've even seen people holding it like that, like the mag grip, I've even seen people hold like this. No, there's only one way to hold an MP40 and that's just with the mag in glorious bastard style and just <laughs> My neighbor's dogs hate me right now as I'm sure my neighbors will hate me eventually. I do apologize. Sorry But by god, this is a cool Cool gun. This is just wow. Well. Just wow. Well. So I purchased this gun at Airsoft Air in Dundalk. They retail for about 350 euro. However, I'm sure if you look harder, nah, I'm not gonna say that. I'm only messing. <laughs> I'm only messing. That's just bad. Yes, they retail for 350 euro. Uh, I would highly recommend it, if not to be a game uh, skirmishable gun, but a definitive plinker or wall hanger. There's some weight to it, the accuracy, I can't tell because I'm shooting in the dark, but I don't really care about that much. The overall wow factor and the fact that it's a World War II German MP40. It's been in God knows how many movies, we all know this gun. Machine pistol, 1944 German Nazi, nine! By far the coolest gun I've owned to date. Thanks for watching. See you next time.